Welcome back to the Flaming Puck Podcast with me, your host, Ian the Dynamo Kelly, joined as always by my co-hosts, introducing first the master of conflict himself, Mr. Dylan Simpson, and to the left or the right of me, I don't know where he is when he comes out on this, but he is the Hello. master of the ribeye, Mr. Chris Ruback. General Wilson. Let's grill some beef over some fire, fellas. Let's Hell yeah. Beef, pork, whatever. But today we're going to be grilling the flames and we're going to be grilling everything about the flames. <laughs> um, Dylan, we're going to hand it over to you to introduce people what we've got for the show because you have got an absolutely hot topic that is almost as hot as that flame and sea that we see behind all of us. Um, right. why, don't you, why don't you hit us up and tell us what's going on? Okay, so um, we're on May 21st right now and as of... Last night slash this morning, there's been just all of the trade rumors um, with, of course, Jack Eichel, which is probably not going to happen. But um, first of all, the rumors are that the Flames are after Eichel and Reinhardt and that uh, that the uh, Sabres want in return. Um Kachuk and Lindholm and a first and Zari, which is pretty rich, but also I'm not sure enough for both of those players. Um, and that's a lot of money going one way and not the same amount going the other way. Um, and that being said, these articles, the headlines of these articles, when you're reading them, you really have to use your brain and actually read them. The headlines of these articles say something to the effect of Friedman says the Flames have offered a blockbuster trade. Um, but when you actually read the article, it says Friedman says these two teams are um, both looking to shake up their core and the Flames have in the past had interest in Reinhardt. And then the writer goes on to say, this is what a trade could look like. Sure. Um, so there are several, several um, articles going around, and most of them say something to that effect. But if you use your brain, you can see that, I mean, I'm not putting words in Friedman's mouth because that would just be stupid. Um, but he, he's saying that both of these clubs need a shakeup in the core and would that shake up the core? Fuck yeah, it would. Um, but nothing is saying, none of the, these articles are actually saying what all these fans are up in arms about, which is what the trade is or what the trade offer was or anything like that. But let's say this trade offer is true. Kachuk, Lindholm, a first and Zari for Eichel and Reinhardt. Take it away, boys. What do you think? Well, I think uh, I think everybody obviously needs to temper their expectations. I mean, these are just reading points when, when it, with a season coming to an end on two teams that didn't make the playoffs. So obviously there's going to be a lot of conversation about what they need to do to get to that next level. The rumor right? mill, yeah. <clears throat> the rumor mill, right? I mean, like, was there a trade offer? Uh, no, because they can't yet. Let's wait for the season to actually fully end. Um, and like DMs obviously talk. <laughs> exactly. Even right. When they're just, you know, not allowed, but that's right. You know, what, what, you know, what, what do you think we should do? Where should we go? Obviously the people that get paid for a living to have those conversations, i.e. Elliot Friedman, who's got one of the greatest, you know, reporting hockey minds out there. I mean, his, his the sources best, are, 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 uh, are, are really good. And, you know, he, he speaks a lot of truth when he's going. Um, I mean, like you said, there's, there's a lot of money, in that conversation but i mean if you look at a couple of things i mean one thing for me and i i don't think i myself would include lynn home in this conversation um because to me he's he's pretty much the best value contract we have on our team right now um signed uh, all the way to 2024 yeah well that's right and, and he's and he's center our top line he plays uh, uh power play he's penalty kill i mean he's he's our best two-way forward there's so many things there's so many reasons why you want to keep Lindholm signed till mm -hmm. 2024 at, at 4.85 is the absolute steal 
Like yeah, it's it's almost highway robbery to, to be honest. Yeah, I think most teams would be happy to have him at six five or seven even. Hundred percent. Yeah, absolutely. He's a player. Yeah, that's so I, kind of, he's a player that we kind of many people consider to be maybe kind of like just a, a top six winger or whatever because he was kind of getting bounced around, you know, a lot. But now I think he's got the potential to be an elite center, right? If he's playing in the right team. Yeah, I think we'd all. I agree. I agree. And, and then and, and then after, sorry, yeah, go for it. Dylan. I was going to say that's why Carolina traded him because they had Aho coming. Yeah. And, uh, they didn't want to have you know another guy who's projected to be a first center for some reason um <clears throat> coming in and taking those minutes from Aho. so that's why they traded him in the first place yeah 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 absolutely and then after that obviously we have matt check who's had you know arguably one of his worst uh, not one of um his worst season not arguably. Uh, <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah, no I mean, no not, not numbers aside, he just he just looks pathetic out there. He can't stay on his feet. You know, he's he's just he's not the same player, not the same guy. But he, I mean, he has one more one more year in his contract at seven mil. Um, that actually that actual salary is nine mil. So he's making ten percent more than that uh, when he signs his next one as as an RFA here. Um, so that's that's big, right? I mean, what has he truly done to to deserve being paid between nine and ten million dollars he certainly hasn't done done uh, jack eichel things you know obviously mm-hmm. you know jack and eichel's signed to, uh, 26 at 10 mil. true that's true yeah i guess how many how many games so we got um 15 16 season i played 81 games uh 16 17 61 games 17 18 67 games 18, 19, 77 games. He did miss any last year because he, he had 68. It was a shortened season. Uh, this year has obviously been another thing. So, no, you're right. He's missed a lot of time. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's also it's also hard to justify that 10 mil with, with the likes of Jack Eichel. However, with, he, you know, we don't know if he, he's going to be able to turn his head. He's got a surgery upcoming, maybe for a herniated disc in his neck. Like, yeah. was he? I believe that's what it is, but. You know, that could take a while to heal. And if it does, who knows if it heals properly? Yeah. 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 Did he come, come back as that same elite? Right. That's right. It's so, I mean, have- as far as the numbers game, I mean, the, the numbers are, are closer than, than, uh, than, than we think, really. You know, because after next season, Kachuk's making north of nine mil. So that's fairly comparable to Eichel at 10. And then you have yep. Lindholm at, at four point. Uh, eight five, which I mean, that's a steal. Um, and then uh, uh, Reinhardt, uh, his contract's up this year. He's at five two. He's a, he's an R, RFA right now. After Maybe that, so, yeah. so so he's likely going to make around. What do you think? Like six five, yeah, six six five ish. We'll say. Yeah. So yeah, sure. I mean, that's that's really the biggest difference in contract is is Ryan is Reinhardt and and Lindholm. Um, I personally. Would rather have Lindholm out of those two. Yeah, I'll talk um, in on that as well. Like I, I'm with Chris, to be honest with you. I mean, for me, look, guys, I'm not gonna lie. I am a um, like like we all are. I'm a huge Chucky fan. Um, when he's to be there. honest with you, I, I want to see. I, and I mean, look, he's young enough to bounce back from this season. I think uh, oh, Chris, Chris made a uh, Chris made a great point last week that um, you know I wouldn't be surprised to see him have an eighty plus point season next year. It wouldn't surprise me at all. I think I think if any player on the Flames needs the off season now to get their head right, get better, and get Brad or whoever's going to be in there to um, get rid of some of the some of the core, some of the the old legs in there, and get some new legs in, I think it's Chucky. I think he probably needs that more than most. Um, just to rejuvenate, but I think, I mean, I'm thinking because my my mindset would be, if we're gonna put an Eichel in the team, I want to see Eichel play with Kachuk. You know what I mean? That's 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 your that's your fucking power power line. And I'm not saying that we yeah. can make that happen. I'm not saying yeah. that we can make that happen without Kachuk. I'm just saying in a hypothetical world, that's that's where that's what shaking up the core is, right? You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So I agree with that. But here's here's a bit of a little hot take on that. Um, I can't. I really should have looked this up because I've been saying it for a week, but I can't remember if it's if it was Team USA or Team North America 
uh, at the World Championships a couple years ago. But um, Eichel and Gaudreau played on the line in international play, and they were an absolute treat to watch together. Yeah, um, that makes sense. Um, but also, imagine the line of of that with Kachuk. Oh, oh, right? oh, good yeah. lord! And then having Lindholm, yes, please. you know, have your second be, be your second center. But you know, one of those two guys is going to have to go if we're getting Eichel. Yeah, I mean that's yeah. I mean, well, salary about, wise, right? What about Reinhardt? Um, you know, I mean, there's. I, I think it's very, very reasonable to think that that um, the Flames could make a play for him in some way, shape, or form. Um, you know what I mean to replace Johnny and or not Johnny, sorry, uh, Money. Like, because mm-hmm. obviously Money's our, se- our second forward at the moment. Um, so I mean, why don't we throw it out? What do you guys think about how? The Flames could make a make a play for Reinhardt, whether it be on a on a free or you know how do, how do we encourage him to come to the to the to the club? Well, here's here's something. Um, I think he was born in Vancouver, but I do think he's like from grew up in Calgary because you know his dad played in Calgary for sure for many years. Um, yeah. So that's a thing. He probably grew up a Flames fan. I don't know that for a fact, but uh, well, we can say it here know. because it's our show. So I'm going to take your take, Dylan. I like that. <laughs> yeah, um, obviously, he would have spent some time here. He was born in '95 in West Bend. Right? Yep. Yeah. So, when, when did Paul play here? That was oh, before '95, wasn't it? It was. Yeah. Did he yeah. leave in like '92 no. or '93? No. I can't remember yesterday. Never mind. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you, brother. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, it's a good, it's a good, reasonable shout to think that why not? Can we strengthen our lines in general? I mean, Reinhardt is a great piece. Oh yeah, jeez. Get in, right? And I don't think Reinhardt is a legit number one winger. He, you know, I think he plays center and right wing. Yeah. But I think he's a heck of a lot of a better second line winger. Than we've had in recent memory. He's better than Bobby Ryan. Yep. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, not better you than are Bobby absolutely Ryan. correct. <laughs> yeah, boy. <laughs> but his contract's not better. No, it's not. And but you know, could be under team control for quite a while. And and if he's yeah. from Calgary, you know, if he's if he lived here for a long time and has roots here and has family here, he could be. I don't know why I keep saying here I'm in BC, but um, do you know what I mean? He might. Yeah, you're, well, look, I'm saying here yeah. as well, and I'm in Dublin. So, so, like, so, so, right so, so, so here's here's your roots, fellas. So um, I couldn't remember for the life of me if he was in, uh, on on the '89 Cup team for uh, Paul. Um, he played in Calgary till '88, and then uh, Vancouver Canucks for '80, from '88 to '90 for two seasons. Oh, okay. so, so okay. yeah, so Sam didn't doesn't have any ties here other than oh. we just like to say he does okay so well he does today on this I'm show wrong. <laughs> for the purposes of yeah that's right yes he played uh played one year for atlanta okay before, uh, coming here yeah. okay, okay. So. interesting interesting but but nonetheless nonetheless still a player that would probably be would rather be anywhere than buffalo right now as um, ties to western canada and he um um something i actually heard from elliot friedman's mouth on a video not just read from some guy who doesn't know what he's talking about is um that he uh, being reinhardt has deleted all mentions of uh the buffalo sabers from his social media and his um I don't know if he's officially asked out, but he's mentioned that he's pretty disgruntled. Yeah. Well, I mean, how, how can you not be? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like what, a, yeah. what a disaster of a team. Yeah. I mean, you, you have guys like, you have guys like Reinhardt, you have, you know, Jack Eichel, they, they pick up Taylor Hall. They, like Rasmus they haven't made, Rasmus they haven't made the playoffs since 2011. Ristolainen yeah, like is there as well, who's a pretty decent, right. you know, defender. I mean, come on, that's that's right, and they're and they're going nowhere, yeah. absolutely nowhere. 
it's, it's kind of sad, isn't it? Because uh, we've heard, um, obviously, friend of the show, Brad Baru, talk about as well how he he kind of spent uh, spent a lot of time down in Buffalo and, and kind of went to see some games. And the fans in Buffalo, um, like they really they really are good fans. You know what I mean? They oh yeah, they love the game. Yeah, like us, they deserve better. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And you know, for whatever, I guess this is what Flames fans should also kind of think. It can always be worse. <laughs> it could be. Right. You know, I mean, I'm not going to blow my brains out if, if Brad is 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 in is in the hot seat next year either. You know what I mean? If he's given another shot, I know I know it comes across that way on the show, but at the end of the day, I think Brad is. That's definitely if if there's one person that you want to entice some of these players in, it's Brad, right? Yeah. I, think- I guess. Maybe. I guess is is it the guy that that potentially is not going to stay here longer long term that you want to be enticing people, or do you want to bring somebody in that? That can rebuild and let's go, right? So I mean, Brad's been Brad's been here for a number of years, and you know he really hasn't built a winning product. You, you know, know not, who I not think that we wanted to transition into know. Brad, but I think if you bring Jack Eichel in, and no matter who your fucking um, GM is, you say, "Hey, we have Jack Eichel. Do you want to yeah. come play with with Jack Eichel?" Yep, that yeah. trying to people to come yep. in. And then obviously Chucky builds up his stock next year as well. I mean, come on, come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I, Eichel could easily replace um, you know Monahan, obviously, and, and probably Backlund at the same time. Right? Yeah, because you know, we do yeah. have we do have some some centers that can be third and fourth. And Backlund's on a big so contract too, dude, dude. Like he's on like five five four five three. So yeah. something like that. Yeah, you know what I mean. That's a yeah, I mean, point, points wise, it's a big contract, but I mean, I I think they would have a hard time getting rid of uh, Backlund Me too. just simply because of mm-hmm. Sutter. And yes, Sutter right. drafted him, and trade protection. Yeah, um, Sutter drafted him. Loves the guy. Yeah, and uh, you know, and and we're, we seem to be building a team with a with a shit ton of Swedes, right? For better or worse, I guess. Mm-hmm. But here's here's <laughs> the other. Here's one for you, Dylan, then, on that as well, actually, because you, you actually asked me this, or, or we had a conversation about it, like, a long time ago. Like, if a new guy comes in, which we've talked about, if a new GM comes in, does he want to keep that Swede base there? Does he want, you know what I mean? Is that, because is that a Brad thing, or is that an organizational thing? Is he going to kind of slowly kind of maybe wean out some of the players? Because, I mean, from, you know, we, we talked about Rasmus Anderson having a really bad season and kind of that's a that's a flip of a coin right there as to whether mm. he's gonna really kind of come back as strong as we we expected him say to be this season we expected him to have you know what i mean we expected him to troop yeah. on. well we, we expected a lot of players to take a you know at least a step forward and not sure, three sure. steps and I'm back just, right? i'm just using him as an example mm. it's the same valamaki mm-hmm. is the same you know what i mean but but dylan what do you think about that one in terms of um if a new guy comes in do you think he would leave that swede um you know thing so i think i i put a lot a lot of stock into that because there's some swedish players that i would like to you know shake up the core and, and go and target such as say Philip Forsberg and, and uh, Gaudreau, yeah. you know, have a, a lateral swap of, of something like that. Or Raquel but, or something, as we mentioned. Yeah. Yeah. I, is, is Raquel Swedish? I, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. He's Swedish too. Okay. Um, either way. Yeah. There's, you know, I, I put a lot of stock into that because I think that, you know, giving you know, Markstrom or or um, Lindholm or somebody like that giving Forsberg a call and be like, "Hey, join this, you know, team of countrymen that we're you know, we're building here and and whatever." Yeah. Then maybe take over Calgary <laughs> yeah. to nine or whatever. Yeah. But um, as far as the uh, GM worried being worried about it, I don't think any GM is super worried about where the players from as long as sure. they're. Affected. Sure, I was only asking that just to play devil's advocate. That's all. It's, it's you know, oh, yeah, no. just just purely because you you know yourself. Like if it's easy for people, like we say, to sit and play NHL and build their own dynasty mode and stuff, and going, all right, well, I want my own stamp. And you know that there is some GMs out there that might have an ego bigger than the club. And some. Say, well, <laughs> this this has every bit of Bradshaw living on it. I want to I want to shake it up and do it my way. You know what I mean? So that's 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 kind of where that question comes from. But. 
Yeah, no, and that, yeah. that's a perfectly valid question, especially considering how often I, I mention. I don't know how much I've mentioned it on the show, but I've mentioned it to you guys quite a few times. You know, outside of the show, the Swedish connection and and stuff like that. And if you bring in Jack Eichel and can somehow, yeah, right, but somehow make it so you still have Gaudreau and Kachuk, then do you have and Hannafin? And, and Hannafin, yeah, then you have a pretty good American base as well. But um, so basically, we're just sweeping away all the Canadians, which I don't want. Which, funny enough, I'm an Irish man and I'm like, give me my Canadian players, but make them good, right. <laughs> make them good. Right. No, 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 nobody's winning Stanley Cups without Canadians. I'm getting a no uh, make Canada great again, <laughs> well, make Canadian, I'm make Calgarian sure. Canadian players great again. <laughs> Didn't the Red Wings yeah. win a bunch of cups with very little Canadians? <laughs> Very true. Good point. Yeah, they had a lot of a lot of Europeans. Yeah, but, European you know, that was at a weird time. Up, guys. The European game is blowing up. I've been talking to um, you know just just in general, even even in my uh, even in working. It's crazy how hockey is getting big in places like even like Italy, and even like you know. So we yeah. always assume it's the Scandinavian teams, but Germany, it's blowing up big time in Germany as well. Yeah, uh, Germany. Yeah, a lot of a lot of. Good players are coming out of Germany now too. So it's, yeah, it's so good. It's exciting. Well, it's exciting. The second best player in the league or whatever. Like I, I'm not sure if I agree with that. I think Royce Royce is mm-hmm. McDavid's not not from Germany. Come on, <laughs> he, he looks more yeah. Irish than anything, doesn't he? Yeah, McDavid, yeah, maybe he looks but, more uh, Irish than I do. <laughs> that's fair. So do I. <laughs> He looks more harsh than I do. <laughs> um, but yeah, anyways, I don't know. I, I think, would it be great to have Jack Eichel? Oh, dude, I, I think that's a great talking point, though, Dylan, and I'm glad you brought it up because, to be honest with you, that's realistically where our ambition should be. You know, I mentioned a couple of weeks back, maybe even last week, that, like, our expectations as Flames fans have become too low. This is where we should be. And like, whether we get an Eichel or not, we should be looking up in that tier. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Uh, We deserve it. Our fans deserve it. It is a big organization. I mean, it's one of the oldest stadiums, you know, in the league. If not, you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's got a history. There's a good history behind this club. And, you know, we really do need to be looking bigger. And I think Jack Eichel, is there much bigger that's available than him? And, can we make it happen? I don't know. That's as, as as Chris said. That's what that's what Brad and the people up in the boardroom get paid for. I, there there are other teams that have more of what Buffalo reportedly wants, um, but you know, I don't think that we're going to be sitting here next the beginning of next season with that caliber of a first line center i don't think that that's pretty honestly the whole idea is pretty unrealistic to me uh would it be great sure would it be worth trading you know somebody who who we thought was going to be our our next captain last year no somebody at plus a first round pick plus somebody who was a first round pick last year plus one of the best two-way forwards in the league no yeah. Nah. It's not for me. Exactly. Uh, any trade, I'll be honest yeah. with you guys, and people might think I'm fucking batshit crazy for this, but any deal involving Kachuk in it, um, I'm out. I don't want it. Um purely I mean, because I see the potential in there and I know I, I know maybe that's a loyalty, maybe that's my head rule or my heart rule in my head. But to be honest with you, I don't see any reason why Kachuk cannot be the player that we all expect him to be. And to be honest with you, I, I don't think any deal involving him. I, 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 I agree. At the, at the end of the day, it is, I mean, it is a business, right? Yeah. I mean, it, to get married to a player is, is not, a, not a good idea because it, it, it'll sure. definitely cloud your judgment. Sure. I, think, I think potentially they should look at a deal that involves either Eichel or Reinhardt. I just don't necessarily think we should do both because I don't want to yes. lose both Kachuk and Lindholm, plus those two first. I guess one's already drafted, but I, to me, I think that's a bit much. I don't think it's much for the trade, but I think it's more than what we should give up. Yes, yes. And and, and I agree with that. And also, um, <laughs> Buffalo has been losing for many years with 
Eichel and Reinhardt on their first line. Yep. So yep. why are we going out and getting both of them? Exactly. I understand, we need a center, I understand we need a right winger, but why, like, they're both good players. Eichel's a great player, but they've proven yeah. to lose together. So why are we getting both? Yeah, we've got to just <clears throat> yeah. bring in more of the same culture into the club that we're which you mentioned last week, Dylan, that we're trying to change the culture. It was actually Chris, sorry. Yeah. yeah. Mentioned that we're trying to change the culture. I think, I mean, like I said, I really do think as Flames fans, if we were looking at possibly getting in Reinhardt, I think that's very doable. I think that's, yep. that's very doable. And doable you, and probably not too expensive. No, right. and not too expensive. And like you could get him for similar money that, that money's on. And possibly replace money. I mean, I know he plays center and right, but I mean, if you wanted him to be, you know, as a center, there you go, boom. Reinhardt's you know? probably a better second line center. Yes, or, I agree. or a better yeah. first line winger. I agree. But, but um, you know, all that being said, I th there's other things we could target as well. Like, yeah, we could target Reinhardt, which would be a good. Um, I think we could target just Eichel. And that would be good. Um, but I think one, like maybe an underrated move, I, I think I made a post about this in the Flames Hub the, the other day. But um, if we target one of the teams who is known to be a front runner for Eichel, like let's say um, New York, let's say we want to help them free up cap space, why not go after Zabinijad? Are they going to need Zabinijad if they, if they have Eichel? Apparently, no, I read I, something I'll today. Clear I, the space. I read I, something today, Dylan, that um, that apparently Reinhardt has no interest in going to uh, to the Rangers. So that's apparently that's something that he is personally <laughs> apparently something that he has requested. Um, and I read that Minnesota Wild apparently are putting some sort of crazy deal to try and get him, and they they seem to be the favorites at the moment for um for yeah, Eichel. Reinhardt Eichel for, for Eichel? Eichel yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, why not, right? Like, yeah, it's, it's I mean, it, it makes sense because I mean, obviously, Buffalo are going to be in a rebuild, right? So, <laughs> so, so here's my fucking crazy <laughs> no, like, on, on Minnesota. I haven't heard really m much about Minnesota being front runners, but Eichel at ten million, Parise at what is it, eleven? Suter at what is it, eleven? Holy yeah. gross Fuck balls. Yeah. Um, no thanks. Three team player. <laughs> or three a three player team. Holy and fucking Parise is not even you know, he's past his prime. Suter's past his prime. Like whew, that's a lot of stock to put in. Yeah. You know? Yeah. No, again, it's right. like like the article that you read, I wouldn't put too much stock in it. I mean, uh, there's plenty of teams out there that could that could look for a Jack Eichel that, that have a lot of cap space that could use them as their guy to to you know to to go forward and but I mean Dylan, you made a point there. If Jack Eichel's not want to go into a rebuild, he's wanna go into a team that he knows he's the main guy, right? Uh, yeah. and that he's gonna be challenging for Stanley Cups. So the other thing is, too, is that Eichel has no trade protection, I believe, for two more years. So he's yep. asked for a trade, but he has absolutely sweet fuck all choice of where he goes. There you go. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, for, for next year. Starting uh, the 2022-23 season, he's got a full no move. And it's going to be this year that he goes. So it really, the yeah. ball, like, uh, well, let's say in this case, the puck is in the court of uh, of – the Buffalo Sabres here. So is it is it a full no move or is it a modified? I think it's modified, isn't it? Uh Cap Friendly doesn't have modified on it, just says no, okay. no okay. move clause. Yeah. Still yeah, I thought it was modified as well. So he can Still. be sent anywhere, right? And he can be sent anywhere. He can even be sent what the fuck is Buffalo's minor team? <laughs> I don't even know. He he could he could be sent to Buffalo's minor team. Until the twenty twenty. <laughs> Can you imagine? That is crazy, man. That is crazy. Does, does he have a two way deal? Uh nope. So he'd be making AHL salary. Amazing. And uh, he'd have to go Amazing. through waiver. If uh if you if you would like to pout, by all means, uh go do it down here. Exactly. <laughs> 
Oh, and yeah. you know what? I mean, as a as a as a father of two, I, I fully support that type of message. Yeah, <laughs> I yeah. Really I mean, you signed a you signed a ten million <laughs> contract. You know what I mean? So, like, it literally, the Buffalo Sabers can say, "Right, motherfucker, you're going to Detroit." They've got lots I mean, of cap space, and they got things we want. Boom. I mean, that's a that's a hell of a contract as your second contract, right? Like, ten million. Contract. You could, you, could, you you go from nine. 925,000 to 10 mil boom with that many years maybe that's where the ego comes from i i can't imagine why he's pretty high on himself can't imagine. um i wanted to i wanted to just throw something in there you were talking about the the losing culture i, I was kind of talking about it too yes um because i said that um eichel and reinhardt together have lost a lot um that being said with eichel um th- he, I don't know if it's an attitude thing or, or, or what, but I actually think that he has a winning attitude. Oh, yeah. Uh, and I think that, that yeah. uh, it was proven. I can't remember if it was last year or the year before, but um, there was this big article in the, the pictures of him sitting alone in the locker room, like way after the rest of the team had left um, and sitting there like being upset with himself that he couldn't carry the team to winning and, and being upset with the team for leaving and, and not, not trying to figure out what the fuck's going wrong. Um, and that, you know, to me, that's uh, the kind of attitude and leadership that uh, might, might help a lot. Kind of like one of our very own Americans, right? Last year before he was told mm-hmm. to shut up. Exactly. And, and do you think that uh, having somebody captain caliber like Jack Eichel come in, probably take over the C if, if uh, Giordano leaves or gets selected or whatever, and all of a sudden you have a new leader, a new captain who, I mean, I, I don't know win. for sure, but almost for sure is going to tell Kachuk to keep playing that game instead of sh- shut up. You know? yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. Especially That's if he's on his line. Yes, yeah. sir. Absolutely. Yeah. And right yeah. there, Dylan, in that very, very little kind of analogy that you made or that, that the points that you made there shows how you change the culture. You know, That's exactly that. it. You can change the culture with one fell swoop if you yep. if you figure it out. Yep. And that's why, <clears throat> you know, like the salary of Kachuk, I understand going the other way. And I understand that if Buffalo wanted to get anybody from Calgary, it's probably Kachuk. Um, but I want to see Eichel and Kachuk on the same team because I think that that as a leadership core would be absolutely stellar. And at their ages and – yeah. I mean, I made yeah. a joke the other day about about seeing what um, about what uh, Toronto has been doing with you know. I think I said seventeen ten million dollar forwards, which is obviously a bit of a exaggeration, but is it really? And why can't we have two? Yeah, I mean, I I don't see like I said, I don't see I don't see the organization. I think they put too much into Kachuk as well. I don't see him as a viable option as a trade this year. I really don't. Um, and I don't see them willing to part ways with. And if it's a first round pick this year, I would be willing to add. You, you know, take Kachuk out of it. Add. Monahan. 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 I, they probably want Monahan, but add somebody <laughs> else, maybe Manjapani. But dude, and... dude, Monahan could be. I mean, look, if they're gonna lose Eichel and they're gonna lose Reinhardt, dude, they're gonna need someone. Monahan isn't a bad shout for a team like well, that. They're gonna want Monahan. either, like, probably. I don't know. I'm not Kevin Adams, but um, they're probably going to want either. Kachuk or Lindholm, and if we try and take both of them out, they're probably just going to shut the, the slam the phone down in, in Brad's yeah. ear. Right? Lindholm yeah. is the only one of that deal that I would be willing to let go for for that deal because you're replacing a first line center with a first line center. To be honest with, with you, a better, I mean, better offensive anyways. First line, dude, center. absolutely. Because don't forget, you're losing you're losing Johnny possibly <clears throat> this year, so you're losing your left wing, your main guy. And then if you're losing your your you know your next best left wing guy, I know Chucky can play on the right as well. 
then you're going to have to look at that problem when we haven't actually fixed the right wing problem also. And well, you've just, added 10 million to your contract. If you're, if you're adding a legit first line center because you want to go on a run, you can't get rid of the guys who are going to play with him. Exactly. That's right. Exactly. Boom. Yeah. You, Boom. You can, yeah, you need those, you need you need those guys on either side. Boom. Exactly. But, yeah. That's exactly it. I think we're all in agreement there. Yeah. We're all making that same point there. That's it. I mean, you, yeah. Cause you're getting but rid I, of Gaudreau who's arguably the best player, right? You know, I mean, honestly. Still wise. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. But that's point, another thing. Yeah, maybe maybe yeah. having a guy like Eichel, who Gaudreau knows and has played with before and, and has had some crazy chemistry before, maybe having that guy will excite Johnny. Yeah. Oh, to be like, hey, man, maybe you can sign for a very small. Um, amount more than what you make now and have you know may, maybe even just a two-year trial and see i, I was just going to say a two-year yeah i'm yeah. sorry to trial run it's yeah. it's a good point too right because look how excited johnny is when when he's playing when uh, robinson's buddy. in the lineup yeah yeah, yeah. Like it, like he, he's he, it excites him which is yeah. bizarre because I mean, I mean, I don't know. There's obviously some sort of off ice connection with the two. They're obviously very close. I, mean, and good I think friends, they grew up together cool. and played college together. Yeah, that's what you're right. Makes sense. So I suppose that's that's a bit different than, than the time that uh, Johnny's had with Eichel, right? But but yeah, still, but I, I think, somebody, I mean, if you're bringing that kind of player in, I think that would show Johnny that, hey, we're take, trying to take that next step. So let's, And that would let's also see make Johnny, I think we talked about this before, it would make Johnny the complementary piece, not the piece. And that is yeah. what he's best suited for, uh, in, in my opinion. Jack Eichel would be the piece, and then Gaudreau would be the complementary piece. That's right. Well, yeah, that's, ex that's exactly right. Let's, let's put a pin in that one for the moment. Why don't we, yeah. uh, why don't we, why don't we all just, just for shits and giggles, okay? Why don't we make our prediction as to where we think Oikel ends up next year. Cause we know it's not going to be Buffalo. So why don't we just throw a wild name out there and see, see what, what we think and see if we're right and we can revisit it. Um, HC Davos. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Strong, strong shout. Um, no. I don't know. I'll, I'll let Chris take this one first because I, I haven't. I mean, New York's the the one that has all of the, the pieces. Yeah, New, York, New York's the one that has the pieces and the and the big talking point. Um, okay, bold, bold 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 prediction time here, fellas. And and I'm yeah. only saying this because they have a ton of cap space, and uh, um, I believe they don't really have the players to throw into it, but I believe they do have a lot of the picks that they can do. Um, uh, I'm gonna say Ottawa. Oh, I was thinking that too, because you know what? I do think they have the players. They have, um, you know, do you give, like, I'm not saying give up, but do you give a a Stutzel even? Or um, yeah, obviously, you probably want to keep Brady, but like, yeah. do you do you throw Stutzel and a couple of picks and maybe a, 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 a roster player to even out the money, like... Um, Zaitsev or something like that. Um, yeah. yeah, those are all good answers. Mm -hmm. So, Dylan, are you going to say Ottawa as well? Um, well, I I was thinking that the other day, actually, but uh, I, I have to go with somebody other than what Chris said, and I can't say New York because, um, I mean... Well, there's, there's two New Yorks. You could say the Islanders. <laughs> yeah, but the oh, Islanders wow. have right now. Um, yeah. I mean, not, not that it wouldn't be great to have a one-two punch like that, but um, personally, yeah. at the their contracts, I'd probably rather have Barzell than uh, yeah. than. Um, but, and I can't say New York because they're um, like the Rangers because I honestly don't think they're willing to give up, and I think it's going to be more expensive for them to get it because. Why would you give your number one center to direct competition like that um, without getting more return than you would get? Um, yeah. Um, yeah. Otherwise, um, 
I don't know who who would be a good show for this. I mean, D Detroit has Larkin. I mean, he's tradable though. Columbus. Oh. Columbus has no. Can you imagine. No center. They have Jack Roslovic so, and so Alex. So Tess you're saying uh, line is on the move again? I, I yeah. I think Lionel is on the move again. I think a first round pick, maybe, maybe a second. <laughs> uh, right. <laughs> and, and maybe um, I don't know who who else. Uh, I, I don't know what their um, what their prospect pool looks like very very well. I'd have to look that up, but I, I'm sure with the amount of losing they've done, I've also heard some crazy weird rumors lately that um they obviously love jones and warensky but they're trying they're thinking about maybe shopping one of them to, to get a top performer like uh, as far as up front is concerned columbus um, is a good show yeah columbus yeah. is actually a really interesting idea that that i think would work right yeah i think it and would work for both teams yeah yeah, and if they could keep Line A, imagine Eichel and Line A. Fuck. No thanks. <laughs> yeah, I don't want. I don't want to think that. I mean, and and plus Tortorella is not going to be back next season, right? So the culture is going to get happier. It may not be a, more of a winning culture, but it will get happier. Yeah. But okay. That's interesting. Yeah, I so like so that. That's my bold prediction. I don't. I mean, you know, I think any of of probably New York, Ottawa, maybe, yeah, I think either of those two are probably more likely. I just didn't want to go with anything too obvious. And mm -hmm. uh, Columbus desperately needs that that center, um, even though they just got rid of Dubois. That fucking trade made absolutely no sense to me. No, I don't. Um, <laughs> I don't. Um, like fucking Winnipeg desperately needed defense and they went and got a third number one center. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, they, yeah, they've been watching the Leafs do it for, for a decade, right? Yeah. We need defense. Let's draft offense. We need defense. Let's draft offense. Okay. And Sounds I, good. I've been hearing all of these <laughs> stupid rumors about Eichel going to Toronto and I'm like, you want a third <laughs> $10 million center and a fourth or fifth $10 million forward and yeah. you're going to have to get yeah. rid of an, like, <sighs> it, just, it just yeah I know they're always at the top of the list right yeah yeah. so, so Steven, just, just, just Steven for... Stamkos is leaving Tampa Bay well obviously he's going to Toronto obviously it was actually, it was actually TSN's Frank uh, Saravalli um, who, who said that he thinks the Minnesota Wild or the New York Rangers um, are potential suitors for Eichel, but he doesn't uh, he doesn't believe that the Sabres would be willing to move Eichel to the Rangers. Yeah, priority. So you know what, Frank Valley this year. Um, I mean, obviously, I've heard his name quite a few times in the past before this year, but this year I think he's been pretty bang on with some of his predictions. To be honest, and and. Uh, so and, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with Frank and say the Wild. There's my one because obviously yeah. they feel that the Wild has something that 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 you know the Buffalo Sabers would want, and I know I think you're right as well, Sir Valley. He kind of he's kind of got a lot right this year, but that leads us in before we so, do the big draw quick, because, because we've got um kind of some some rumors that we're we're trying to get off the shelf here, but for you. Obviously, Kaprizov is going to be off the shelf if you're going for for Eichel. Um, you're going for Eichel to play with Kaprizov. So, who from yeah. Minnesota and and what? Yeah, and what picks do they have? I mean, what, do they have a good kind of? Do they have a good talent pool, or you know what I mean? That's that's that's. I mean, I Joel Eriksson Eck has been playing pretty good, um, mm -hmm. and you know. What about that, what about that young kid? That six foot five kid uh, on the Wild. The heck is his name? Hold on, let me find him. 
I, I don't know. You... Going to leave this one to you, Chris. The Wild definitely have some players, but and and picks, right? Like like. Yeah. Yeah, they have picks, which I think would be. I mean, oh, I honestly think that that's what they're going to need to do. Yeah. So maybe maybe Cervelli is right. Maybe maybe that's what he's thinking. Maybe they have the picks that the, the Sabers believe that they would want. Yeah, and, and they're one. shopping Dumba, who is from Calgary, by the way, but that's besides the point. So, so is Taylor Hall. <laughs> yeah, oh, fuck off. But fuck that guy. <laughs> fuck him. <laughs> oh, I can't wait till Buffalo, or not Buffalo, uh, Boston signs him for too much, and then he comes back next year and makes them miss the playoffs for the next 10 years. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, was, I was pretty happy that he went elsewhere so we could just shut up about him for a, another I was year. actually kind of happy he went to Buff or I keep saying Buffalo um a lot of Buffalo talk today but Boston and started lighting it up like he did because they're more likely to resign him thank fuck yeah 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 I agree Anyways, you wanted to segue into to a different topic because we've been on this one for like 50 minutes. <laughs> we should. Yeah, absolutely. I wanted to um before we do the do the draw um for the flag, I wanted yeah. to uh bring up something that you had mentioned as well with a, a certain journalist that you wanted to call out and uh, kind of got called out by uh by our very own Daryl Sutter um <laughs> in a in a very, very good press conference last week. Um, so why don't you take this one away, Dylan? <laughs> because I know I know this was on your mind at the time, and I think it's it's not right to kind of leave it just rot away and not be brought up on uh, on the flame and poke. I think it's right that we, um, yeah, I'm completely in the dark on this, and I'm excited. Yeah, <laughs> are you really? <laughs> yeah, both, both in the dark okay. and excited. Let's do it. I don't know who we're talking about, but I well, sure I have it. Right now. You, you, you yeah. don't even know who we're talking about Eric Francis and his wonderful journalism that makes players in <laughs> Calgary and 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 his questions that make coaches not hate him and and right, right. Uh, you're gonna watch McDavid. It's, you're gonna watch McDavid. I got pictures of McDavid it's, it's been, in my it, toilet. It's 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 been his uh, it's been it's been his mission to try and drive the flames out of Calgary and into Houston, right? And then wasn't that two, three years ago, four years ago? Mark so, my words, this team will be in Houston by by 2021. And he's been trying what, to... What's the like, Don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm not the biggest fan of let's keep Gaudreau because I th- think that he wants to go somewhere else. But yeah. he is uh, he is spearheading and he has so much more um, reach, even though we're doing this, than, than I do. But right. he's the questions he asks Gaudreau, the questions he asks Sutter, like thank yeah. God Sutter actually answers him sarcastically and in different words, basically telling him to fuck right off. Like yeah, like he's supposed to be a flames um homer. And yeah. like the other day. I can't even remember what the question was because he asked so many stupid questions, but at the Southern answered with this incredibly sarcastic jab at him. And then, and then right after the person who was running the, the media availability said, okay, next question. Southern just like, chimed in, like yeah. oh, some, some of these guys don't even want us to win. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's right. He, he was, he, he, he looked across the, the room, right? It's like yeah. some of these guys don't even want us to win it. Yeah. yeah, I remember Basically, that. That was amazing. He got and like real, even he got real excited, didn't he? Because McDavid's name was mentioned, and uh, he was like, "Oh, does that mean you're going to be like watching McDavid in the playoffs?" And I was like, "Dude, dude, probably not going to watch any more games." That's what he said. That's what he <laughs> yeah, said. Yeah, he said that. that I, I doubt I'm going to watch any more hockey games. That's this what year. he said. He goes, "I doubt I'm going to watch any more hockey games this year." So I was like. <laughs> It went, oh my God. Well, you know what? I'm going to be in Calgary in 2021 as well. So maybe me and that particular journalist can uh, meet up. Throw fists. Um, I, I think we should nothing. kidnap him and take him, take him up to Viking and drop him off at, at Sutter's Farm. Sutter's I've always place. wanted to try human meat on the grill, on the barbecue. Oh, right. Don't say that. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. We just, where, where are we headed here? I'm only kidding. I'm only kidding. <laughs> I'm only kidding. I'm only kidding. <laughs> 
But uh, no, really, really stupid question from a stupid journalist um, that, in my opinion, is losing credit. He really is just a steaming pile of shit. Yeah, right? he's just losing. He's losing credibility <laughs> with every question that he asks. So fuck that guy. Yeah. Weeks ago, he had a, a segment. Him and and staging and Brower was it? Whoever it was that was in the intermission that day. Um, <sighs> He asked, or he he was mentioning something about how hockey players think and how players, you know, veterans think, and Stajan's yeah. just like, I don't know, man. I've I've played a thousand games, uh, more than a thousand <laughs> games in the NHL, and you're trying to tell yeah. me how fucking hockey players think, like, right? Yeah, you just you've never played the game. Up? <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, yeah, you've never you've never played the game at this level. Shut it. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. Correct answer, but um, it's only one way to close today, um, and we're going to pass this one over to you, Chris, because you had uh, you would wanted to do this giveaway for quite a while, and we are going to yeah. right now live on the flame. So, so a couple of weeks ago, we wanted to just try and get more more people involved, watching, you know, get people on on board, and you know, let's hear what everybody thinks as far as how the how the flames are doing, what they're doing, where where they're going, all that fun stuff. So I figured a good way to build some awareness would be to try and get some people to share share the podcast, right? Share it in whatever platform you want. Tag us and away we go. Unfortunately, the turnout wasn't as as much as I thought, but that's okay because we'll do another one uh, um, in in in, in uh, future episodes. Um, Dylan had three people that uh, tagged him, which is awesome. Uh, two of which tagged him twice, so they're going to get two entries into the draw each, and then uh, another gentleman that tagged once, which is uh, which is good. I appreciate all the tags. I got um, tagged by the same people, so yeah. <laughs> good, good. Um, I think if uh, if they are in Calgary area at least, um, that would be cool. I would like to potentially just drop it off um, live and get a photo for the uh, for the. Uh, uh, for the page, right? Yeah, yeah. If, if we can, if if whoever uh, gets uh, whoever wins can is willing to do that, um, Dylan, if you can introduce the the three uh, the three guys that you you had tagged, I'm gonna uh, thanks, Sean. I'm gonna uh, drop them uh, into this flames hat. Yeah, one second here. I I want to make sure I got all the all the last names correct here. Mm. Um. So we've got uh, one uh, one fine gentleman who tagged twice and, and shared twice, whose name is uh, Rajesh Bria. Okay. Uh, we've got another Go gentleman who tagged twice and shared twice, um, uh, Greg Garten. And then we've got Matt Allaire, Allary. I'm not really sure how to say his last name, but uh He's he uh, shared and tagged once. So the fresh okay. prince, we're gonna call him Fresh Prince of Alary. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So there we go for the uh, three foot by uh, five foot flaming sea flag. Hopefully in the Calgary area, delivered by me personally. If not, I will absolutely ship it to you. No big deal. All right. There we go. I one in there. You got one. And we have Mr. Gregory. Gregory. Congratulations, Gregory. Greg. How'd it be, Greg? You got the. Uh, Appreciate you got, it. You got a. You got a, a, you got a flames. A flames flag. And very similar it, to the one that's in my backdrop here. And yep. what we'll do, we'll even bring Greg on the show. We'll bring Greg on mm -hmm. the show once. Um, once. 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 That's right. Which he's got I, I want to see his man cave after he decks it out in flames here. Absolutely. Yeah, because he's he's actually uh, a Colorado first guy. Um, I know. <laughs> and he's uh, he's since he started watching the podcast, he's uh, started following the flames a lot more than than he used to, and um, he actually oh, cool. wanted to uh, to come on and and talk uh, maybe one one day this winter summer about uh, a previous. Uh, unnamed playoff series the flames and avs had maybe we'll have to do that 
Ooh, okay. I don't remember that. I don't remember that five games at all. I'm not gonna no, say no, I'm looking. I don't, it's it's somewhere at the bottom of my bottle. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say it's not I, something I'm I, looking forward to doing, but I'll do it. For the, yeah, I'll take I, I, the team. I, I I do remember standing in the standing up in game five in in the dome and yelling at the players, asking them why there's 19,000 people there that want to win and are showing life and excitement. And these players were just dead, didn't even want to be there. Yeah. It was pathetic. It was pathetic. And this, this yeah, brand that's... new kid from Calgary shows up in Kale McCarr and, and right? just lights the flames up. He did okay. Did all right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not very good, though. I, I don't no. think he's going to pass. But he probably flash in the pan, right? It'll be another maybe another year he'll start to teeter off. It's not like he's he's in Norris conversations this year or anything like that. It's not oh, like right. yeah, yeah. you know, call their call their trophies and stuff like that, you know. No, no big deal. Car. Car. Yeah. What about my man there. before we go? Mr. Milan Lucic is uh has been named for a potential I honestly thought we were gonna get through a full episode without you mentioning his name. Yeah, I, I honestly did. I thought I'd do that for you, Chris, in particular, because he could. He could. But the Mastodon Award is yeah. pretty, pretty big, and obviously he's been through some stuff um, as far as almost retiring last year and coming back and being that good. Um, I'm not, sh- I, you know, I probably would have put him more in the Mastodon um, conversation last year, and I probably would have put Stone in this year. Um, because of all of the blood clots and injuries and back and forth AHL at his age and, and taxi squad and then coming back and playing so well. But that said, Lucic is a close second to, to, to Stone for me. But uh, congratulations yeah. to Lucic. Yeah. And 100%. I'm not related. Yeah. Well I'm deserved. Not related. I may have a big nose, but I'm in no way related to uh, Mr. Lucic. People are starting to say there's something going on yeah. here. That guy played from like, Boston. <laughs> that's, that's about that's where the toys are. You, you 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 get paid per hashtag, right? I'm saying nothing. <laughs> hashtag look at that schnoz. <laughs> right? Hashtag sand people. Whoop whoop. Hey. <laughs> but no, it's it's cool. It's it's nice to end something on a positive like that with one of our flames Absolutely. getting um, you know, getting in the conversation for any kind of award. So um and, shout out to michael good stone. On, right i mean a hell of a year hell of a year hell of a year shout yeah. out to michael stone and to uh millie lucci yeah. so um i think with that being said as well we want to thank everybody again because i mean we're, we're over 100 views pretty much every week now um you know the comment mm-hmm. section are just growing constantly as well people are kind of giving us their feedback on on what we're we're, we're conversing about and our, and our dialogue and it's great to see because at the end of the day, we are the Calgary Flames podcast show, whatever you want to call it at this point, you know, by the fans, for the fans. It's not just a tagline. It's legit. You know what I mean? Um, and I think in our last little interaction there by, you know, Chris giving away a, a, a flag shows that, you know what I mean? So we do care about our listeners and uh, we love the fact that you, you tune in each and every single week. And I think until next week, um, that's about all we have time for. So for me, Ian Donimo Kelly, for Mr. Ribeye Steak, cook whatever the hell you want on a barbecue, Chris Ruback. Good. And of course, for chilling Dylan, because he was very chilling Dylan today. Uh, wow. He'll wow. get you next you week. Made, you made the change. That was good. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> until next week, ladies and gentlemen, that is all we have time for, and we will catch you next week.